All right, I wanted to use another JMAC snack here to let you know where we are at with these lawsuits. Now, I want to be clear here. So many of the lawsuits that are being filed are not lawsuits filed by the Trump team. These are lawsuits filed by the Kraken, Sidney Powell, and other people. And those lawsuits are being uh, soundly defeated in the courts. Now, people were very excited when Sidney Powell filed her lawsuits in Georgia and Wisconsin. And they said, this is it. This is what she meant when she said she was going to release the Kraken. Well, we now have uh, some information about both of those lawsuits. These both happened today on Monday, December 7th. And uh, it's not good if you had high hopes for these lawsuits. And you may be thinking, yeah, it needs to go to the Supreme Court. These aren't going to the Supreme Court, and I will tell you why. But here's what happened. A federal judge has dismissed another Georgia voter fraud lawsuit, this one led by Trump supporter Sidney Powell, who requested decertification of results and an investigation into Dominion voting machines. But two of Powell's lawsuits were dismissed Monday, including one in Michigan. A Bush-appointed federal judge in Atlanta pointing out grievances with voting machines and court decrees should have been filed months and years ago when they went into effect, not three weeks after an election loss, and highlighting the fact that Powell's grievances belong in a state-level court not a federal one. The plaintiffs simply do not have standing to bring these claims, Judge Timothy C. Batten said. And we've also seen another state level appeal thrown out of court today, as well as an appeal filed on behalf of attorney Lynn Wood that was rejected over the weekend. Powell and Wood working together outside of the Trump campaign uh, in the Stop the Steal movement, lodging similar dismissed claims. We're live in downtown Atlanta, Nicole Carr, Channel 2 Action News. I want to thank uh, WSB Atlanta for that report. Of course, in Atlanta, they're very worried about any cases filed that would overturn their election. Some interesting things you should know about these cases. First of all, in Georgia, there were people filing motions against this uh, these lawsuits. And guess what? It's a bipartisan group of people representing the state because they believe after three recounts, and a signature verification that this election is decided and is secure. But you also heard in that report that they filed this this lawsuit in the wrong court. This is according to Judge Timothy Batten Sr. Listen to what he had to say. They asked the court to order the Secretary of State to decertify the election results as if such a mechanism even exists, and I find that it does not. The 11th Circuit said as much in the Wood case on Saturday. So he comes out and says they're asking for something that there is no legal remedy to offer here. None whatsoever. He says it's relief that the plaintiffs seek this court cannot grant. He went on to say, quote, They asked the court to order the Secretary of State to decertify the election results as if a mechanism even exists. You heard that part. Then he went on to repeatedly suggest that Powell could have filed her lawsuit in state court. And he cited a federal appeals court ruling that says federal courts do not entertain post-election conduct. Excuse me, contests about vote counting misconduct, he said. Then he said in their complaint, the plaintiffs essentially asked the court for perhaps the most extraordinary relief ever sought in any federal court in connection with an election. (laughs) Wow. Then he said, they want this court to substitute its judgment for that of 2.5 million Georgia voters who voted for Joe Biden. He said, and this I am unwilling to do. Now, the reason that this is not going to the Supreme Court is because of the ruling, which was this doesn't even belong in federal court. So if they want this to go up to the Supreme Court, they're going to have to back up. They're going to have to get it into state court, then go through the the appeals process. Uh, it's It's just not done or not heard of that a ruling like this would lead to a Supreme Court ruling. Now, Something very important is going on that I want you to be aware of. We have all of these people. I see them all over social media. 
these diehard Trump supporters that are saying, look at all the evidence. And when they're talking about the evidence, they're talking about what their eyes are seeing and their ears are seeing in uh, press conferences from Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and other people. And they're trusting that that is evidence. They say, look at the affidavits. And they're saying the affidavits are evidence. Or those people could be uh, tried for perjury or punished for perjury. Here's the thing, though. None of those things, none of that evidence that you're seeing is being presented in the courts. Because there's no punishment for lying to the media. There's no punishment for signing an affidavit over to Rudy Giuliani. None whatsoever. Until you try and present that evidence in a court of law. And then there are ramifications, far-reaching ramifications for uh, false claims, filing a false report, uh, wasting the judge's time. So you have to ask yourself the question, and I've read every one of these cases. And the question is not, is what you're seeing from these witnesses, is that true? That answer already comes if they're not presenting any of that evidence in a court. Now, Rudy Giuliani at one point said, well, we know that the judges would throw out our evidence. That's why we're presenting it to the people. What? No, if you have evidence, present it to the courts, let them throw it out, appeal it, and then appeal it to the Supreme Court. That's the process. The problem is what you're seeing on TV, the video in Georgia, the affidavits, all of those things, they won't stand up to court muster. If they would, then that would be the lead evidence presented in every one of these courts. And it's just not. It's not happening. So people are getting ginned up with all of this hope that somehow this, this what they're seeing, it's got to be real because people are saying it. They showed you a video and they described what they think is happening in the video. You don't know if that's what's really happening in the video. You know, as I've said, everybody's become an election expert in the last 15 days. They all know how the voting machines work and how election laws work. And you can look at a picture and you can know instantly what's going on there. You got to stop. The arbiters of truth in this case have to be the courtrooms. It can't be the court of public opinion. And the truth is that Rudy Giuliani is only trying his case in the court of public opinion. He's not trying his case in a court of law. Otherwise, all of those things he's presenting would be in those courts. And it's not. And that's why they're getting thrown out over and over and over again. So the bottom line is that those of you who are seeing that information, you're getting played. Because if it was real, if the affidavits were real, if it was legit, those people would be in courts and they would be testifying under oath in the court of law. But it's not happening. And you know what? Tomorrow is Safe Harbor Day. That's one more line that makes this even harder and harder to cross. Uh, People are saying that they have a high hope for January 6th when Congress is going to have to certify the electoral votes. They believe that if one side, if one party uh, calls for an investigation or calls into question, that then suddenly uh, they'll have to vote on it. And then that's when Republicans can triumph. Well, let's say that that did happen. And I, there's at least one uh, elected official who I, who I believe has said he's going to challenge the results on January 6th. Well, if you read the law, it clearly says that it has to go through the House and the Senate. So even if you do get your challenge through, it's not going to matter because the House is controlled by Democrats and the Senate is controlled currently by Republicans. So all of these last-ditch efforts, all of these things are just... They're just stretching out the eventual end here. Now, I would, I w- if there was fraud being presented in the courts, I would be sharing it with you. 
And I would be saying, look at this fraud. People need to be locked up. We need to change the results of this election. I would gladly come along with you on that ride. But they're not presenting the evidence in a court of law, my friends. That should tell you what they believe about the validity of those claims. If they thought it was legit, they would present it. Because remember, you can't, if, if if you get denied in a state court and you want to appeal it to the appellate court, you can't add new evidence. So everything's got to be on the table in the state court in your first lawsuit. Everything you've got has got to be there from the beginning. And if it's not there, and in fact, in several of these lawsuits, one of them, the Trump lawsuits, the the uh, plaintiffs admit openly that they don't have evidence of voter fraud. So I just hate to see a large group of people ginned up to anger, questioning the validity of our election process because some people and you don't know what their interest is, you don't know what their motivation is, standing up in a pretend hearing, making claims and allegations that they're obviously not prepared to make in a court of law. That should worry you. It would be entirely different if everything you saw in those hearings was being presented in a court of law. It's not. It's not happening. What is Safe Harbor Day, you ask? Uh, That's tomorrow. It marks the arrival of the ever-popular Safe Harbor Day. We celebrate it every four years. This is the deadline set by federal law for states to resolve challenges to election results, locking in the 538 electors who will meet in their state capitals to vote on December 14th. All of the battleground... I can't talk tonight. All of the battleground states... Contested by the Trump campaign, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia have certified results, showing Joe Biden as the winner. The final step before Biden is inaugurated on January 20th is for Congress to meet on January 6th. We talked about that. To receive the Electoral College votes and declare a winner. Uh, Representative Mo Brooks, Republican Alabama, is the one who said he plans to challenge Biden's victory. Again, it won't matter. Even if it does go to a vote, uh, it will be split and both houses have to approve it. So if you're hoping on that, sorry. Uh, Trump's legal team has presented its accusations of fraud to panels of Republican state lawmakers, but they haven't made those claims in actual courtrooms. Why not? I was uh, discussing this. I won't say arguing or debating with somebody online last night. And he's like, I'm not a lawyer. I trust them. I know they know what they're doing. <laughs> How can you win a court case if you're not presenting your evidence in court? And, and do you really think the Supreme Court is going to take up a case where evidence is not is not presented? I mean, come on, you're being ginned up to anger. You know, you talk about stop the steal, the real steal. Uh, that it's trying to happen is Trump is trying to steal a legitimate election. uh, Stop the coup. The real coup, unless you have evidence that you can present in a court of law, is Donald J. Trump trying to steal this election. That's what's going on here, my friends. Unless you can present evidence in a court of law to, to, to dispute that. Everything else is just allegations. Hearsay, allegations, speculation, unfounded claims. And I know everyone gets mad when the media says unfounded, unfounded. The reason they get away with saying that is because the courts are where you will find out the truth. Because they will scrutinize the evidence. The court of public opinion? No way. Trump supporters are going to believe it instantly. Those people who are Biden supporters, they're going to disbelieve it instantly. That's why we have courts. That's why we're supposed to have nonpartisan judges. So, my friends, I just really think it's time to move into acceptance mode and then move on because this is too much. And I believe you're being taken advantage of.
but that's just me. All right, that's our JMAC uh, news snack for you today, or JMAC snack, I guess, not the news snack. I was hearkening back to the JMAC news show uh, that I used to host. Please take a minute, and if you are watching, then scan one of those cool little QR codes. They're called flow codes on the screen. One of them will allow you to make a monthly donation or become a patron of this broadcast. The other is to make a one-time donation. Both will help me out. I hope you've seen that the quality of this uh, production is getting better and better all the time. I want to continue to improve it. And you can also see we are bringing more of these broadcasts to you on a regular basis. That is the goal. I need your help to be able to accomplish that goal. If you are listening, then go to the description of this podcast and you can see how you can make a one-time or a monthly donation. Thank you so much to everyone who has donated so far. It is a tremendous compliment. I take it very seriously that you're willing to pay to be able to hear my opinion and what I have to say. I hope that I am honoring that well and uh, that you are satisfied with the product that you are that you are purchasing. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or suggestions for this podcast or for future JMAC snacks. I would love to hear from you.